All right, in this lesson, we will continue our study of solving systems of polynomials. Um, all right, for problem number one, we have a cubic function and we have a linear function. So um, a cubic function, and this is a positive one, remember that's like an n type of a shape in general and then we have a linear function so um, here's just an example of the type of thing we might see you know we'll, we won't know until we uh, actually solve the problem but this is in general the type of thing that we're dealing with a cubic and a line so let's see what actually happens um, a substitution is going to be the way to go right here I could do elimination um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do substitution. So looking at it this way, all right, I've got y equals x to the third power plus 5x, okay, on the one hand. And then I've got y equals 5x plus 1. If I take this and do a substitution, then I'm going to plug it in right here. And that's going to make this x to the third power plus 5x, okay, is equal to 5x plus 1. Now, if I want to solve this, um, it would be helpful to get 0 over here. So let's go ahead and subtract 5x from both sides. Okay, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides. All right, so these are now gone. Um, but also the 5x and the negative 5x, these are going to cancel each other out. So that's going to leave me with x to the third power. Okay, no, these are gone. Uh, but the negative 1 is still there. So I'll have x to the third power minus 1 is equal to 0. So I need to solve this. Um, okay, now the thing about this is uh, this is the difference of two cubes. So um, it's been a while, but um, please remember that when we have the difference of two perfect cubes, it is going to always factor as a binomial times a trinomial. Do you remember this? Now the binomial comes from uh, just taking the cube root of each one of these things. So it'll just be x minus one will be the binomial. Now the trinomial comes from uh, first I, I would start with the beginning and the end okay and then we'll leave the middle for later so on um, the beginning and the end will come from squaring these so if I square this I'll get my first term so that's x squared if I square this I'll get my last term so that's just one now the middle comes from multiplying these two together. So 1 times x is just x. Um, but it will always be the opposite sign. So this was negative, which I just brought down. So this will be positive. Okay, this middle term is always opposite. Okay, so there you have it. We have factored this. Now, this trinomial will never be factorable. So I'm not going to bother with that. Um, so, because I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula to solve this because right now I have uh, factored as this times this and all of this is equal to zero um, but now what I need to do is I need to set each of these factors equal to zero and solve so I need to do x minus one equals zero and I need to do um, x squared plus x plus one equal to zero uh, over here, if I add 1 to both sides, that gives me x equals 1. Okay, so that's something I needed. Now, over here, this is not factorable. Normally, I try to factor it or something. Um, so, quadratic formula. Uh, please remember the quadratic formula. All right, and by this stage in your career, you should have memorized the quadratic formula. There is that song to help you remember. Opposite of B, opposite of B, plus or minus square root, plus or minus square root. B squared minus 4AC, B squared minus 4AC, all over 2A, all over 2A. 
All right, so you can run that back again. Ip, ip, rewind. Play it as many times as you want. You're welcome. Now, this part underneath the radical is special. It is called the discriminant. Um, we are always going to um, do that first, if you will. Okay, so this part right here is called the discriminant. Okay, we're always going to do this part first, okay? Um, should have put a box around that. Anyway, that's the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. Now, first of all, a is 1, b is 1, and c is 1. That's a lot of 1s. Okay, so the discriminant, like I said, is b squared minus 4ac. Always calculate that first. So that's going to be uh, 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1. All right, well, um, 1 squared is just 1. And then 4 times 1 times 1, that's just 4. So um, this is just 1 minus 4. So the discriminant is negative 3. OK, so put that in your back pocket. Um, now let's go ahead and finish the quadratic formula. All right, let's do it over here, though, because we're going to get into the airspace of the next problem. Um, so the rest of the quadratic formula says, um, like the song I just sang, opposite of b. So b is 1. So the opposite of b is negative 1. OK, plus or minus square root. All right, plus or mi whoops, I missed. Plus or minus square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac. Well, that was negative 3 all over 2a. Uh, OK, well, a is 1, so 2a is just 2. So this is what the quadratic formula is, is giving me. Um, so yeah, this is awesome sauce. Um, so I'm going to have negative 1 plus or minus, and this is going to be i radical 3. Um, so this is imaginary solution, so um, I'm not sure exactly how helpful this is going to be, but these are the solutions. So I have the one real solution, and now I have my two imaginary solutions. Okay, so okay, these imaginary solutions are not going to lead to any, any, any intersections. Okay, so remember from the beginning, we're looking for where the line touches, um, you know, the cubic. So it could have had up to three intersections, but um, these imaginary solutions means uh, it's not touching. So we're, we are really only going to have one intersection, and it's going to come from the x value of 1. So at this point, we will... Uh, Forget about these imaginary solutions because they will not lead to any solutions of the system. All right, so forget about that and just focus on the x equals one part. Okay, usually I make a table of values, a nice little table of values. And uh, but in this case, it's going to be a really short table of values because we only have the one x value. Okay, x, y. So I have an x value of 1. Now, I need the uh, y value that goes with it. So um, I really could use either one of these equations, uh, but why not use a simple one? y equals 5x plus 1. So in this case, that means uh, y is going to equal 5 times 1 plus 1. Well, that's just 5 plus 1, so that's going to be 6. All right, so that means I'm just going to have the one solution, uh, which is 1, 6. That's it. All right, whenever I do these problems, I like to take a look at the graph electronically so I can just get a feel for what actually happened. So I'm going to use Wolfram Alpha. And uh, so here's another way you can check your answers. Um, using Wolfram Alpha. So I have y equals x to the third power plus 5x. Okay, so this is what that looks like. x to the third power, got to use the caret, plus 5x. Now I can just type and, and then I've got y equals 5x plus 1. 
Okay, so I'll type y equals 5x plus 1. Just hit enter and see what we've got. Okay, so take a look there. Um, the blue curve, that's our cubic. And uh, this pink one, or whatever color that is, that's our linear. And as you can see, there's just the one intersection point. And uh, that one intersection point is the point 1, 6, um, which is exactly what we had. Okay, so that's what's really happening here. All right, um, for problem number two, we have ourselves a cubic and a uh, parabola. All right, I mean, I could say it's a cubic and a quadratic, um, but that has a special name called a parabola. So for the cubic, we're expecting uh, this type of thing. And for the parabola, okay, we're expecting uh, this type of thing. Okay, so in general, we're looking for maybe two solutions, depending on exactly how it goes down. Um, up to two solutions. Uh, we won't know until we actually do it, for sure. So, um, what we have here is uh, we have y equals 2x squared on the one hand, and then we have y equals x to the third power. So I'm going to do substitution. So I'm going to take this substitute it for y. So what I have then is, um, you know, I, I feel like I'd rather do it the other way around. You know, maybe I'll just do it. So what I have then is 2x squared is equal to x to the third power. Okay, I want to keep that x to the third power positive though. Um, so I am going to subtract 2x squared from both sides like that. And uh, so that's going to give me 0 is equal to x to the third power minus 2x squared. Um, but I'm sure you won't mind if I put the 0 on the other side instead. All right, clearly that's the same thing. OK, um, now I'm going to try to solve this just by factoring. And what's the first step of factoring? A uh, GCF, uh, you, you know this. Um, the common factors are x squared, so that's the GCF. So I'm going to pull out that x squared, and then I'm going to think about what's left behind. And uh, that would leave behind x minus 2. And all that would be equal to 0. All right, so to find the solutions, I need to set these uh, factors equal to 0. So I'm going to do this. Okay. And so on the left side, I'm going to have x squared equals 0. And then I'll have x minus 2 equals 0 over here. Well, um, this is just going to give me x equals 0. All right? Um, you can think of it as taking the square root of both sides. Um, but common sense, you know, the only thing you can square that gives you 0 is 0. And over here, I'm adding 2 to both sides. So I'm getting x equals 2. So I have two x values. Now, I need to find the, the uh, y values that go with these. Uh, so to do that, then I make the t-chart. So I have x values, y values. So I have two x values. I have 0 and 2. So I'm going to use this simple little y equation, y equals 2x squared. So y equals 2x squared. So in this case, that becomes 2 times 0 squared. And that's just 0. And in this case, that's going to be 2 times 2 squared. Uh, 2 squared, which I do this first, 2 squared is 4. And 2 times 4 is 8. OK, so that gives me two solutions. That gives me a 0, 0, and 2, 8. All right, so that's very similar to what we were looking for, two solutions. Um, but let's go ahead and look at an electronic um, graph to see what really happened. Let's use Wolfram Alpha. Let's put a box around this. Okay, so looking at our two equations here, we have 
y equals x to the third power, so y equals x caret 3, and uh, y equals 2x squared, so y equals 2x, and for squared we'll do caret 2. Just hit enter. Okay, so this is how it went down. All right, so you can see our parabola here in purple and our cubic there in blue. And here are the two intercepts. There's one here and one here. Okay, our 0, comma 0 and our, what was it? Um, our 2, comma 8. Uh, this is our 2, comma 8 right here. All right, so it's always good to get a glimpse at what really happened. All right, um, that's going to be enough for this video. Um, I think I'll probably just do two problems per video. So I'll see you on the next video for part two.